Hello and welcome to Morning Prayer with St. Albans. Uh, I would like to wish everybody watching a happy St. Albans Day. We are thankful to Bishop Allen for letting him, uh, or for letting us rather, help celebrate this feast of St. Alban on Sunday. It gives us a chance to party twice. Um, and I'm very pleased to be uh, aided in our worship with our music director, Elizabeth, and by the senior warden of St. Albans, Mr. John Amsler. Um, so uh, we will be, uh, this is St. Alban, by the way, and um, as our patronal feast, we'll have some nice prayers for St. Alban, um, and uh, the readings will, our special readings for our patron saint. Um, but before we do any of that, let's have Elizabeth Start us off on the right foot with this hymn. We are going to sing, Let Us Now Our Voices Rise. you very much Elizabeth it always feels like a fight song for the church and so I am ready to rock and roll giving thanks to the father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light amen, amen. dearly beloved we have come together in the presence of Almighty God our Heavenly Father to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And Elizabeth's going to help us sing the Venite. Our psalm today is part one of Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever, and you have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one, I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? O mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea and still the surging of its waves. You have crushed Rahab of the deep with a deadly wound. You have scattered your enemy with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens, the earth also is yours. You laid the foundations of the world and all that is in it. You have made the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and truth go before your face. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness, for you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King." 
glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger, who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There we go. Uh, our first, Elizabeth will lead us in our first canticle this morning. This is canticle number 13, A Song of Praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The second reading is a reading from the Acts of Apostles. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest. Cephas, John, and Alexander, and all who were the high priest family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power, by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the peoples and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and asked how this man has been heralded, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which... The, we must be saved. Now when they say the boldness of Peter and John and realize that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as the companions of Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Elizabeth, help us out. <laughs> okay, our second canticle is number 20, The Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship Christ only 
Our third reading this morning is a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Meanwhile, when the crowd gathered by the thousands so that they trampled on one another, he began to speak first to the disciples. Beware the yeast of the Pharisees, that is their hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after, and after that can do nothing more. But I will warn you, uh, but I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten in God's sight. But even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers, and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourself or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the feast of St. Alban, our patronal saint. Um, believe it or not, in northwest Iowa, we did not need to fight too many people to get the name St. Albans. Uh, the Apocrypha goes, uh, a matriarch of the original gathering of Episcopalians in Spirit Lake was asked what she would recommend this gathering be called, what, what name they might take on. Um, and uh, she thought about it for a little bit. And after a while, she said, St. Alban. And the congregation surely having heard of St. Alban, but perhaps not, was likely a little confused. You know, not, why not one of the 12 apostles, or why not something like Trinity? It seems like almost every other church is named Trinity. Um, and the woman very uh, wryly replied, well, if we're St. Alban, we'll be at the top of the phone book listing. Perhaps that reason might seem silly, but perhaps not. Here we are on St. Alban's Day, the, uh, the, the celebration of our patronal uh, saint. If you don't know what St. Alban looks like, I have a little picture here. Just going to make sure that you can see what that looks like. Here, let me back this up a little bit. There we go. Um, here's St. Alban, and if you don't know the story of St. Alban, let me tell you. Alban, a Roman soldier of Verulamium, was the first martyr of the British Isles. While yet a pagan, he harbored in his cottage a certain Christian priest named St. Amphibolus, who was fleeing from his persecutors. Alban, seeing his constant prayers and watching day and night, was baptized and became a Christian with all his heart. The soldiers came in quest of the fugitive, and Alban, assuming his instructor's cloak, showed himself to them. On his way to the execution, Alban had to cross a river, and finding the bridge full of people, he made the waters part and crossed over on dry land. And the executioner was so impressed with Alban's faith 
that he also converted to Christianity on the spot and refused to kill him. Another executioner was quickly found, however, and the first was killed after Alban, thereby becoming the second martyr of Britain. Alban is the patron saint of converts, refugees, and torture victims. I have been the priest at St. Alban's for about three years. I will celebrate three years on July 1st, um, later this week. And some things have become apparent about St. Alban, the church, St. Alban's the church. One of the things that is quickly apparent to anyone who walks in the door is hospitality. Whether you are greeted by ushers for the first time you've been to a worship service uh, at St. Albans, a Sunday service, or perhaps you're just coming for Advent lessons and carols, or perhaps even just um, a tea party, St. Albans has this wonderful character of welcoming people as they are. I have seen St. Alban, St. Albans welcome so many different kinds of people and not just welcome them, but incorporate them. You can't be at St. Albans too long and, uh, and not be asked to uh, participate in some ministry or um, opportunity of service. That's the first place where I see us really living into the life of St. Alban. St. Alban was, uh, so, you know, this Christian minister knocked on Alban's door back in the 300s, be trying to outrun his captors. And Alban, not knowing who this person was, probably likely only knowing that he was going to be trouble, welcomed him in any way. That's the first thing. Our Saint St. Albans and our Church St. Albans are hospitable. We welcome people that we don't know, even if they are likely to be trouble. We welcome them in anyway. But here's where we might grow in to our St. Alban. Alban demonstrated great Christian hospitality before he was even a Christian, by welcoming in this stranger. But perhaps even more impressive, he allowed this stranger, this, this foreigner, this person from another faith, talk to him, converse with him. And not only that, he watched this Christian pray and read and learn and probably write letters. Alban was converted by his hospitality. He let those whom he welcomed into the church, to his house change him. I feel in the months and years to come that we might have a similar opportunity. We pray often for more people to come to St. Albans so that we might welcome them and might make them feel honored and that they might know some of God's hospitality. But if we really want to be St. Albans, if we really want to be St. Albans Church, we will allow ourselves to be changed by those whom we welcome. I feel like that is the challenge God is inviting us to in this next season of life together. When this disease has been lifted from our land, there will be people hungry to know the knowledge and love of the Lord. I have no doubt we will have people to welcome. But if we are to live fully into God's invitation, we will allow ourselves 
to be changed, to learn from, to even be converted by those whom we welcome. And when we do that, that's when we'll really take off. That's when people will convert to the faith just by seeing what we do, like they did for St. Alban on the way to his martyrdom. So be watchful for those whom we might welcome to St. Alban's and be aware that the Lord will invite us to be changed by them as they are changed by God. Amen. We continue now with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. John, would you lead us in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your holy martyr Alban triumphed over suffering and was faithful even to death. Grant us, who now remember him in thanksgiving, to be so faithful to, in our witness to you in this world that we may receive with him the crown of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Elizabeth has one of my all-time favorite hymns, uh, next for us. In case you have a hymnal at home, this is hymn number 458. <laughs>
Thank you, Elizabeth. I now invite you to offer your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Uh, today we pray for our, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop. We pray for Alan, our bishop. We pray for the Bishop Search and Nominating Committee. We pray for Marchetta, Ione, Vera, Michael, Will, Lori, Elizabeth, Vicki, Harvey, and the Holzhauer family and the Cranhagen family. We pray for um, Eric Wolford, Grace Preston, Luke Preston, Carter, Ashcraft, and Ryan Smith. We pray for the Society of St. John the Evangelist and the community of St. Mary, Southern Province. We pray for those who are sick and those who care for them, those who will die today, and those who love them. John and Elizabeth, do you have anybody you'd like to add? I would like to add the Crow family from Texas. They had a, a death in the family last week. I have no one. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Bringing to mind all that we are thankful for we offer God this general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us today um, for St. Albans Day. Uh, just a reminder of a couple things. Uh, if you are wondering how you might get your... Um, your pledge in. We have a couple different options for you. You are welcome to send it in. Send in a check to P.O. Box 85 in Spirit Lake, Iowa, 51360. Or if you'd like to give online, we are happy to. Uh, we're um, happy that we can offer that. Um, all you have to do is go to St. Albans Episcopal Church. Org and click this Give button. And when you do that, you can uh, you can put in a credit card number, or you can put in a, a checking account number, and you can choose to give to any number of these things. Um, there's not a uh, senior warden's fund at this point, but after the great job that John did, maybe there should be. Um, I'd also like to say because we uh, are so, we have such a spirit of hospitality at St. Albans. We are going to be doing a Zoom coffee hour at 11 a.m. this Sunday morning. Um, and information about that will be, uh, was in the Chronicle and will be in the bulletin as well that comes out on Sunday mornings. So look for information there. We hope to see you there. It'll be over Zoom, so it is bring your own coffee. We won't have Roy to make us 
uh, the best brew in town, uh, but uh, his spirit will bless us, I'm sure. Uh, so I hope to see you there. Um, on behalf of our senior warden, John Amsler, and our music director, Elizabeth Knudsen, thank you for praying with us this morning, and we can't wait to see you soon. So until then, God bless you. God keep you. Bye.